Hello everyone, uh, my name is Wes Cowan. I'm the lead transgender wellness um, clinician for OutEast Transgender Wellness Program and I use he, him, his pronouns. Here with me today is Miss Amazing Head um, and she's going to introduce herself. Hello everyone, my name is Miss Amazing Head, the HBIC self-proclaimed queen of ATX. My pronouns are them and they and she. Awesome. Well, thank you so much uh, for meeting with me. And would you like to tell us what we're going to be talking about? Well, I let you fill me in and I just answer your questions. Like my <laughs> mind has been everywhere in the last, last couple of weeks, to be honest with you. You have been very busy. You're a very busy lady. Um, yes. <laughs> so. I wanted to talk with you because you are so active in the community and you are an activist and you've been talking um, at some of the town halls and rallies and most recently um, I know that you talked at uh, a service for Memorial um, at the, the um, was it at the city hall? Um, for uh, I, the healer? No, I didn't get to make it to that one, but I did MC the Pride at the Pole at the City Hall, which was the day after okay. of the memorial. I didn't get to make it to that one. Oh, okay. Um, but you were slotted to, to give a talk there. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, how did you get involved in activism? Well, I started, um, really I've been, doing activist work in a community for the last past 13 years. But now, um, as a start of 2020, I've been getting a lot of recognition for it. Um, basically, it started off in um, the uh, LGBT Black Solidarity for Gay Lives uh, March and June, what we had for uh, the defund and awesome police department. I started, um, I led the march there with my fellow trans sister, Natalie Sanders. We led that march there to, uh, to the state capitol. We spoke and we said, said their names and, uh, for the trans lives that were murdered in the last five year. We spoke their names and we led, led our um, peaceful mar march to the police station where well, we met up with different um, peace organizations here in Austin and spoke and got to like really talk to one another and hear each other. And was it was a very nice time in Austin, especially to uni unity of all these other groups. And um, <clears throat> from that, I had led um, a candle visual at the Austin Police Department for the Black tra for for trans lives that were murdered, and from that I've just been really busy from the Austin Chronicle, from forming up my own organization, which is titled Austin Queer Cultural Center. I'm starting this organization to create a space for all all queer lives here in Austin, Texas. I realized that since I've been back home in Austin in two years. There's not a space for us. And so it's my duty to be a fellow Austin Knight, the Queen of ATX, is a creative space for us here. That we, I know that we can go to eat, feed the homeless, feed the queer, shelter the queer. Just a place for us to go, go to 24 hours. Shelter as well, you know, to help out a lot in our community. Uh, I'm glad that you mentioned, um, <laughs> mentioned that. How can people get involved now with helping you establish uh, establish this dream that you have of getting this space to become a reality? Well, one thing I realized with having the dream and chasing it and trying to make better choices here in Austin, I've been asking a lot of people to donate Venmo to Austin Queer Cultural Center. Um, that money is strictly for to put back into the community. If I, uh, lately I've been doing a lot of active, uh, community work with feeding the homeless and that's been coming out of my pocket. And due to all this pandemic and how everything shifted, my funds are 
really low. So I've been asking for donations just simply to start off with by feeding, feeding the urban queer that's homeless. So I've been asking for donations on Ven Venmo and anyone that can help me father this vision I have for the city of Austin and point me in the right direction to put me in the right room with the right people. Um, yeah. Yes. I, I think that collaboration is definitely needed and I'm Thank so you. excited that, um, that we have like BTLA black translators of Austin now and that that folks in the community are coming together and being like, actually, we need space. We need our own space. And we need people to listen to us. Um, and I know that, you, that you've been um, talking with those folks, Naomi Wilson, um, mm -hmm. Tabitha, Rocky Lane. You've been talking with these folks as well. Mm -hmm. and, um, they've been, they've been, have been, they have been very helpful very, very helpful and pointing me in the right direction since it's, everything is shifting since the, since early June and I'm liking the way how we're shifting. I know I stated back in the Austin Chronicle that pride shouldn't be just one month. If we apply ourselves every day in the next 12 months, we would be in a much better place. And I think this is a great initiative to start and how everyone in these other organizations that we stated earlier, They've been very great utilized help for me and for the city of Austin and the change that we are all marching towards. Yeah, for, for me, like having worked in uh, other organizations that had, um, had like I worked in HIV and so we had um, collaborations and a coalition with other other organizations that also focused on HIV work, there's just not that uh, amount, there's not that many other organizations um, that are working with queer folks, that are working with trans folks so that we can create a collaboration. And so I love to encourage folks to start those because I want that collaboration because um, everyone has a mission. And one, if there are more than one folks, then that an organization doesn't have to change their mission or stretch their mission, that there are more voices so we can get, yeah. we can provide more spaces. And so that's why I'm so excited for, for BTLA and yes. for Austin Queer Cultural Center. Um, you kind of touched upon this a little bit, but why is the work that you're doing so important to you? I figured, well, it's, it's, it's known. It's very important, um, especially in a time that we're in now. I know that if things were different about 10, not much even 10, five years ago, I would be in a much better place now. It's the future. It's the ones, the children to come underneath it. after me, you know? What I do now is going to lead on to the legacy of Austin. Whatever shift for pavement, if I decide to run for mayor, I'm, I'm here to, to utilize my voice. I'm valid. And I know that it's going to be more to come after me. And I need to make this a better place. Even if I don't get to see the future, I want to know that if I'm here right now, I can make a difference. It, it can just be feeding someone, talking to someone. You know, that makes a difference for me because I didn't have that. So now I have to fill that void in others' lives here in Austin, Texas. If you're gonna move to Austin, Texas, you're gonna be here in Austin, Texas, you, sh you should know that number one, you're welcome in the community. Number two, we accept you here. And number three, we got you, period. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, and and so so much of the work is like we are visible so that others don't have to be, and we have that privilege of of being able to do that. Um, and I know it's super hard, but I we have gone past the record of trans folks 
that we have lost this year. We have passed already the record from last year. And that's hard. And I can see that you're really emotionally, just like I am. <laughs> it's, it's really hard and I know that, um, I don't know all the stories, but I know the life, the struggles, the ups and downs, especially being homeless, especially being out in the streets, especially being a sex worker. You know, these lives matter, but are we doing, is the community doing what they need to do to protect us, to protect them? So starting up Austin Career Cultural Center, I, I believe that it would be open 24 hours access if if a black if a trans or black trans or anybody queer queer that's in a trouble of need or feel like their their life is in danger or they're not safe or they just need a safe place. We need a safe place for us. So even just setting that up into motion and play that can change a lot with these numbers. Yeah. And actually bring awareness. You know, the center not only would be utilize for that but this would be to educate the community of who we are to to show them who we are and other than just a different light i don't want to always turn on the news and only thing trans we hear is about a depth a death toll i want other things that we can educate them and know that we're valid just as much as these others have that these uh, others that in their communities that they uh, be able to utilize, we should have that just as much as our community as well. No one yeah. should feel like they're alone. So a lot of these trans deaths, there's no explanation to it, but we can just become our shield for them to come. I know that I don't want none of that to happen here in Austin, Texas at all. So if you're trans, if you're queer, if you feel that you're in danger or something, seek out for help. Um, sooner than later, we will be able to have a hotline, someone you can call 24 seven to come get you. You know, I've had friends call me in the middle of the night, like, hey, I don't feel safe, can you come get me? Just something little as that, you know? So um, that's how I feel we can change and shift this. Mm -hmm. type of behavior that's going on in the world and our and, and our reality you know yeah. these are things i fear as well yeah and and it's been going on for a really long time like marcia p johnson you know she she is a she is now more famous more well known than ever and that's because people are actually looking at our history and she was a trans woman of color and um we also have um sylvia and so we are now like looking at our past and seeing how we can come to the future and these women the folks at stone other folks at stonewall they were they became visible uh with their identities and and they had community and that's i think what we need still we still have to be visible we still have to talk about it and we still need to come together and that's that's what i love about the austin cult, uh, community the trans community the queer community like we try to be here together and i think lately we've been working even harder about making sure that and it and, and it's showing it shows i'm i'm greatly greatly appreciative of the community and the new Austin, I like to call it, and how everyone is coming together and has been there for me. I'm extremely blessed. And it really shows to the world and to others that I'm outside looking at how life is for a Black trans girl or a trans queer in Austin, Texas. And we're showing them how we are. So I just want to give us all a pat on the back. I know we've been going nonstop in 2020. <laughs> uh, as a community, as a city of Austin, I, I, I just want to salute everyone and all the organizations that's out there. So many, and that's a good thing. <laughs> so many, and that's a good thing. More and more and more to come. Yeah. Um, what do you see 
from your activism? What changes have you seen? I'm, I'm being more involved. <laughs> I was like, oh, they, they see me now. They hear me. Uh, before I realized that it's just, it was a group of people I was surrounding myself with and I was just getting the same result. And through the midst of all of these peace rallies and pre peaceful protests and stuff, I was able to meet so many other leaders and organizations and, and was able to start organizations, you know? Um, so I'm most definitely seeing the change in initiative action. And I realized that when I was going out to these protests and, and marches and rallies and stuff like that, I, I, I felt welcome, but I did not find any, uh, not one person other than my girlfriend, Natalie Sanders, that I identified with. There was no trans women. There was no black trans women out there. There, there needs to be more. And I felt like if they see me out there, they see me trying, come march with me, come join me because I'm not just doing this for me. I'm doing this for us all. And it would show a lot of appreciation if I see my sisters march next to me because if I'm just making a big difference with myself, just imagine if it's two, three more of us. So if you guys know any trans girls out there, girls of color, send them out send them my way like let's we, we we're stronger together you know you don't have to hide no more come on out you know you're valid you you matter come speak because if if not now you know i don't, wouldn't want to say i would hate to say i don't want to read about you in the news so you got to come out here and i know that it's a tough time with with these pandemic and how everyone is going and like don't want to feel like you target, but there's other ways that you can go around protecting yourself. So I see a lot of, a lot of work that I've finally been doing is coming to light and it's changing a lot. It's shifting. But, um, that was actually like straight into my next question. Like how can others get involved? Are you okay? <laughs> yes. How others can get involved. Social media has been like the biggest thing because since we're all not able to go out and meet and like really besides these protests, social media such as Instagram, Facebook has been like literally Zoom has literally been um, a platform for us to connect and just be connected and stay up to date with a lot. So if you're on Instagram, follow on Instagram, Austin Queer Cultural Center. Um, with their, I try to post, I try to update, and try to keep a ring of um, other organizations in Austin on social media, such as Austin Outpost. Uh, we have uh, Black Queer Lives Matter ATX and, and a list of other ones, Kind Clinic. There's so many. Just stay connected through those people on social media. That's how I've pretty much been being connected with all and uh, pride at the pole you know that that's a new organization i think that was a wonderful event that we had and so mm -hmm. i was able to meet other organizations and meet other people out there and it was really great you know yeah and also like and also austin black pride um, yes sheldon um i heard has been doing really great work and yes um you know how how can um how can somebody be a good ally like especially to to trans women to to trans women of color to people of color how can, no. how can i as a as a trans white guy be a good ally for you support goes a long way and what i mean by support Anything that stands in a way of bashing or belittling, belittling or mischaracterizing a trans person, period, on the internet, you see it, delete it, report it, anything that's going to put us in a bad light. Because the only thing that world, I feel that the only thing that the world sees and how they feel about trans is what people post on the internet. And oh, you get a million likes because this trans is probably out here on the street, had a mental breakdown or not getting the right mental uh, 
help or whatever, and that stuff goes on the internet. And so the people will be stuck in their mind thinking that, oh, that's trans, that's how life is. No, we're actually real people, normal people, not just always freaks at a, not, we're not freaks at a circus or your show. We're like, get to know us. So anyone that stands in that lighting or belittling us or just making us look like a fool, exit out. Exit out, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uplift yeah. us, uplift us. We we already have it hard enough. So, especially in the gay community, you know, in our own community, we already have it hard enough. And we, we when we come around, we should be uplifting and loving each other, support. And I understand that, like in all communities, people have their rights and the disagreements and agreements like we do in the gay community. But at the end of the day, we always have to love and respect and uplift each other, especially our black trans, our white trans, our all trans, our all queers, non-binaries too. Everyone deserves to be treated with love and equality, like care, you know? And if, yeah. <laughs> when people ask me about relationship stuff, I'm like, bottom line it's communication mm -hmm. and boundaries these are the two key things to relationships yes so when i am having an open communication open dialogue with someone who comes from a different background than me i'm i'm able to have that communication i'm able to listen actively listen to what they're saying and not thinking about what i'm gonna say next doesn't matter what i'm gonna say next what matters is what the person is saying to me um, mm. because I need to hear it. Um, and also uh, like the boundary of like being a trans person, like somebody shouldn't come up and ask me all of these personal <laughs> questions. questions. <laughs> um, so boundaries, and, I'm able to say no. <laughs> it falls back into like all these people know is what they have seen on the internet. So it's our job to like counsel Ex delete all that negativity out because that's the only way. And it's our job to fill up that void to say, okay, let me find a way of how to educate you guys. And there's videos out there on, on social media platforms that help people with their intellectual questions like that. But if you do come across someone like that, just, I do the humming game. Like, <laughs> like okay, no more questions. Because <laughs> I can't answer them. What about being a white person, being a good ally? to a person of color um, and how can white people respect black people's boundaries and how is it to be able to to communicate those boundaries with white people oh wait um with a set of white people i've been around they have been very understanding um open they feel like it's their job, you know, to protect me and uplift me. And I, and I love them for that. You just have to understand we all come from different backgrounds, you know, and we're, we're in this great, beautiful city, Austin, Texas, and where we keep it weird. And I don't know, it's going to be really hard for me to answer that question because Austin has been a very different city and Austin has never been like a racist city for me. You know, I always have been uplifted by the whites here in Austin and embraced by the whites here in Austin. Like, now it's different. It's, it's, good. it's better now. Before, I'm not going to lie, you know, we had our ups and downs because 10 years ago, you know, ghetto was ghetto. Now, wretched is wretched. You know, times have changed. Things are, things are shifting. And I just don't, I just don't want, you know, this black lives and black trans lives thing to fade out. Like we, we matter period. Yeah. And, and I've been knowing that a lot of people have been hipping to this thing. And so I don't know if it's an introduction or it can just be a phase right now, but wherever it goes, I like where we're at now, what we're changing for the future. And you're from Austin. You were like born and raised here, mm -hmm. right? Yes. 
it, is Austin now, like how has Austin changed between when you were a kid, when you were an adolescent, you know, to now? How, how has Austin changed? Austin is still <laughs> weird. <laughs> it's still weird, but most definitely it has changed a lot. People are not from here. <laughs> so it's just like, it brings a different taste to Austin now. I love Austin. And as a kid and as anyone from a hometown, they just stick to those old memories. But now that those old memories are not here no more, a lot of things are changing. But I, I like the new Austin. I'm proud to be from Austin. I, I'm happy to be back home. Austin is beautiful. And you just got to get to see the new Austin and all the people that's moving here from everywhere. It's just like, it's weird. It's like, I don't want to say perfect, but it's like a perfect weird. To um, me, it's definitely weird, especially with, well, <laughs> when, when we look at statistics, mm. Austin is a very white town. Yeah, uh, it, it, it has always been that way. I'm going to be honest with you, be real with you. It has always been that way. And it's worse, you know, I-35 was specifically, specifically constructed to split white folks from folks of color. Mm -hmm. Growing up. West, West and East. West and East, yeah. All those years ago, you know, you had the Freeman that, that established on the East side and, and Houston Tilson mm -hmm. and all this and just wonderful stuff. And now, it's not the same east side that it was. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> People, I'm like, where are we going? If I'm talking to my friends, they're like, oh, I'm going on the east side. And I'm like, I remember when no one said <laughs> No one said that. <laughs> it's most definitely um, has changed. And I'm from East Austin. <laughs> and like where I live now is like Northeast Austin. And I don't think I will go any more north. Oh, Austin, if anything, I'm trying to be back on the east side. And things have changed there. So um, that's home for me. <laughs> Downtown East Austin. <laughs> I, I love it, but, you know, I don't, I, I make the choice of not being part of, of that ch cultural change. I go and I support local, local stores, local restaurants on the east side but I don't want to be a renter on the east side. Man, I remember the old East Stars and like the hippie vibes or the hip stars. I miss them. They kind of just got moved out, like right along with the hood. Like, it was, like a, <laughs> it was a whole vibe, yo. It was beautiful, but now seeing it is just like, seeing the new Austin and how it's gentrification, it just kind of put me like, okay, that's old Austin, old thinking. Where do you want to go in Austin? And I want to go right in, in the high rise because that's where I'm working on too. So I say to myself, you know, two cranes, two cranes, destruction and construction. So it's, you got to destruct to construct new. So I look at it at, at, as out of that way. So, um, yeah. I plan on building with Austin going up. So if anyone planning to be here, where we're going, that's where we're going. <laughs> if we like it or not, but pretty much Austin is, is growing and everything I feel needs to be made over until new. Yeah. Now, certain things that like in the neighborhoods and pushing people out, I'm not for, you know, but building a new city, building more jobs, building you know, until the city, yes, because that's where it's gonna go, going to happen. If it's the number one city in the world, we're going to have just as much as problems as other number one cities in the world in the past. So yeah, just just bear with Austin. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what? Look, once it all get finished, it yeah, look and come together. <laughs> you you know the quotes on that. You've been here for a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing's ever finished. We're still building on I thirty. Still well, building. I thirty five yeah. and and Mopac one eighty three. All of them will always be in construction. Always. <laughs>
<laughs> they just need to build one big circle around Austin on the highways. They just need to just go ahead and connect them. But then we can't because we just keep growing. Like we're growing to Kyle and then and Buda and like mm. we're gonna we're gonna be like this huge thing of San Marcos. Um, and, <laughs> I mean, not San Marcos, San Antonio, Austin, uh, and like Round Rock. Is yeah, like, it's gonna be like this huge thing. Um, I mean, even Backstrap. <laughs> Um, yeah oh wow i graduated from bastrop <laughs> high school like it is completely mm -hmm. different from 2008 to now mm -hmm. it's completely different wow. um and i grew up in pflugerville completely mm -hmm. different um and round rock too all of it's different um, oh yeah most definitely round rock <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it's all different um and a lot of folks that were on the east side in Austin got pushed out to Pflugerville. Um, mm -hmm. And that's where I grew up. And it, to me, for Pflugerville, it's a lot more diverse in where I live than Austin even now is for me. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just really interesting uh, how th those things can influence you. And, and it's just, you know, 15 minutes on 35. Yes. <laughs> the different Excuse me. Time. Yeah, that's crazy. But yeah, just to see how Austin has grown, especially in the outer cities, it's 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 coming together. <laughs> but uh, one thing I would like, one thing I'm for is to lower the rent, the, uh, the rent in Austin. Lower the market rent, please. It's just a little bit, just just by a hundred and fifty dollars, please. La, la. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, the studio, <laughs> the studio costs yeah. over eight hundred dollars to rent. Yeah. a studio um yeah that's one big <laughs> thing and and it mostly affects like lower like people that are earning lower incomes you have a lot of mm. like people coming in and doing tech jobs well they can afford they can afford yeah. that um me i'm never gonna be able to afford that rent. <laughs> uh, that's why i'm trying to create the austin queer cultural center Come on, live with us, baby. <laughs> we'll get you on your feet. You know. When we when we look at statistics, folks that are members of the LGBTQ community are more likely to earn less. Trans folks are more likely to earn less than than L G B folks. Mm. And when you add race on top of that, it's even lower and the earning potential and these these preconceived notions there's racism mm -hmm. there's transphobia there's even homophobia in there and it's like what do we do we come together mm -hmm. because who else like is gonna take who else is taking care of us and knows our struggle yeah and, <laughs> and you know yeah. preaching mm -hmm. to the choir <laughs> to like with jobs and stuff like that just uh one thing i realized with creating with austin queer culture center i'm going to place like job ready classes to train people for trade certifications i want to get that in there and um create jobs in the city for us and for us so that we're, we're a part of this great city that's forever changing that we have a place here yeah. you know so it's it's in it's in the works you know i got a lot of work <laughs> it sounds like you also want to do like some education like even for employer and potential employers that's, that's yes. what it sounds like too yes um, which you know is much needed and and that's why like we all kind of like most of us folks like we all have heard of each other or know of each other yeah. because we're all doing this work because we have to mm -hmm. um and you know see we're funny when i was telling rocky like oh yeah i talked with queen and he's like who's queen i'm like he's like you should talk to miss amazing head i was like <laughs> that is <it>? yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so like we all kind of know each other and know the work that we're doing and we're all doing similar work um, yes. and and that's great like that we all like know that we need to do this work um, and what is super important is 
that we're getting paid to do this work. Hey, sign me up. Look, <laughs> sign me up. I need a job. It's like, <laughs> I'm trying to create one for us all. Like, <laughs> but yeah, I've been applying. But hey, you know how this shit goes. <laughs> yeah, like we should not have to do this work for free. Trans yeah. folks shouldn't have to educate other folks on what it's like to be trans or be a good ally to trans folks and and folks of color black folks like should not have to educate folks for free on how to be a good ally most definitely <laughs> period <laughs> consultation a consultation uh llc gotta get going <laughs> gotta get it <laughs> and and luckily there are organizations that will will pay because they know that this work is important and that it shouldn't be done for free. Um, I know we've gone off a little top on a little. It's all right. <laughs> we just, you know, we always do that when we talk. <laughs> yes, it's real. Look. <laughs> um, you know what? What would you want people to know that we haven't talked about already? Like about getting involved in protesting or being a good ally. Um, what, what do you want people to know? Like, even like, what is your message? You know, I know you have a message. My message is, if you're going to be in Austin, Texas, do something. If you're going to live here, do something. You're gonna do receive anything from Austin or trying to put into Austin, be ready to do the work. Because it's work needed here in Austin. If I gotta do it by myself, I shouldn't be able to do it by I shouldn't be doing it by myself. So I'm I'm greatly appreciative to the ones that are out there helping me to make change in this city. But my message is this amazing hit. Love respect, even if they don't want to give it to you, command it. Command if you want change in your community, command if you want change in yourself, command if you want change in any damn thing that you see that needs change. Because sitting at home complaining about it is not going to get you nowhere. Sitting on the internet pressing like, if you see a person I have to protest, it's not going to get you nowhere. You going out there on that field, battleground, and making your voice valid. Letting them know that, yeah, you see me, now you're going to hear me, and I'm going to command you to respect me and respect my life. I matter. We're going to go out here and do it. So if you want something done, like Mama used to say, you got to get up and do it your damn self. <laughs> and I'm, that's, that's a victory lap because I have the victory. I have the victory. That's what I want. I want victory for what all that I feel that I need to accomplish and gain. <laughs> Always have your victory laugh. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> and, and you said like people can reach out to you if they want to get involved. Yes, most definitely reach out to me on Austin Queer Cultural Center on Instagram, Austin Queer Cultural Center, gmail at gmail.com, and as well on Facebook. I know you guys see my personal Facebook page, but that's my personal Facebook page. But if you guys want to reach out and do activist work in the community, please reach out on Austin Queer, Queer Cultural Center. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that boundary. Yeah. You know, <laughs> even though we do this work, yes. we have to separate our personal and our professional mm. lives. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, really quickly, how do you keep safe at protests? How or what? How do you keep safe? Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> I am a licensed concealed citizen. I need to renew. I'm going to renew. Um, as being a Black trans woman, 
and especially with these numbers are, are trans women, trans deaths and black trans women deaths in the community are growing up and around the world. I always see fit that I, I personally protect myself with my personal handgun. And it, it goes with me everywhere, to the mailbox, to the grocery store, everywhere I go, because that's the world that I live in. And that's a reality that if I want to make it, not saying Austin is not a safe place, but there are ones that fell, fall through the crack. And so I, I commend and salute every girl out there to personally buy them. If they're not a convicted felony, if they don't have any uh, doc, doctor's orders reciting that they cannot own a handgun to get one to personally protect themselves, please. So, yeah. <laughs> they don't call me the gun. Don't feel comfortable with handguns. Don't put yourself in those sort of situations. One thing is, one thing I like to do, be home before the sun go down, you know, because after the sun go down, hey, if so, you do, do leave home. Make sure you're with a group of people or a group of friends or have mace, have a taser, or just have your plan set out, set up, you know, know your environment where you're going, how how to, you know, reach out for help, if anything. It's so much going on in today and how it is not just only being a black or being trans or that it's not safe out here for anyone. You know, those are there have been active shooters and stuff in the past and stuff like that. So be cautious of your surroundings. And if you have, if you feel like you need to personally protect yourself, you have that right. That is our Second Amendment. So, um, hey, it's it's fierce out here. You know, it's it very is. fierce. And I'm real. And I had to learn that being on the front line or with these protests in March and pro and um rallies and stuff like that you know at the end of the day i have to go home by myself i live by myself who's going to protect me you know and i it's so so much my community our community can do and at the end of the day i just want to i just know that it's my it's my right to protect myself and um and my and my loved ones and my friends around us like you know because these you know god look what happened at one of the protests is you know it um um just so much it's just just so much so just protect yourself and be careful and you're that's all the thing i can't say like you were referring to garrett foster yes uh oh. that was trying you know i was gonna go out that night with them and i'm just like i actually i was out i was out that night and but i wasn't like with that crew but i was three blocks away and i'm just like what the hell is what the it's going on. And even with something simple, like not simple, but little like that, you know, we got to protect ourselves. Especially if we're going to be putting ourselves out there on the front line. I fear cars, you know. I feel, I feel like I fear cars. You know, I can't <laughs> stop a car, you know. That's a real fear. You, and you it know, has happened. So. Most, more than once, people have yeah. used their vehicles to hurt protesters um yeah so and you don't have to you don't have to like answer this question or really elaborate like any personal mm -hmm. details about this question but what what advice would you give to folks who do have a concealed hand license and who are maybe trans or folks of color or a trans person of color and they encounter the police with their concealed handgun. I mean, th this is, this has really happened to people yeah. that they have lost their lives. Like, how do you handle that? For pointers, what I do, just in case it's easy ever was to get out there, this is <laughs> recorded. When I'm driving my car, it's in my glove department because it can stay there. And I usually lock my glove department. Period. If I was to get pulled over, I would do everything the cop asked me to do, and I would let him know. And yes, there are fire, firearm in the car. Yeah, where is it? It's in the glove department, and it's locked. You know, he's gonna like, okay, I need you to get out the car. Get out the car. Don't fight. Do what you gotta do. You feel what I'm saying? 
just mm -hmm. remove yourself from the firearm if you do find yourself getting pulled over. So therefore, you know, oh, it's a firearm required, but I don't have one on me. It's in the glove department lock. Yeah. It's their ass. So just do stay when it gets to that point, you know, most officers, hey, you know what? I pull you over that is a ticket. All right, cool. It don't get to the point. If they ask you, tell them the truth. If they ask you. <laughs> yeah. Um were when you were a kid, did your parents ever have with you like the talk about being a person of color and interacting with the police? No, not really. It was just an urban, not 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 an urban myth to say, but in the hood, popo. You know, my mom, you know, and my aunt was like, "I'm gonna call the police." Oh God, we were. Oh my God, you know, we do whatever you want us to do. Stop it! I'd be good. I call the police. You know, but now you better not call. We call we call the police, Lisa. You better not call Miss Lisa. You know, police, Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I have, I have never had anybody else with the mm. same experience. My mom mm. used to say to us, I'm going to call the police on you. The cops are yeah. going to get you to make us behave. <laughs> I've never known anybody else that, with that experience. So my mom instilled in me to be mm. afraid of the police. Yeah. That That's it. Like they were used as a way to make us to be in line and to be honest with you before this whole george floyd my one of my goals always one of my goals was to always become a police officer um before all this police brutality start to hit toll. You know, that was always one of my goals is to become Austin, Texas, police department first black woman of trans on the police brigade. But in the shift of these events, I have literally changed. You know, if I was to be a police officer, I wouldn't be a dirty one. I would be the one for who my people for what I stand for what can I bring to the situation can I make it better or can I make it worse and I believe I can make it better but my my goals have changed until I can see our police department do better and change and so yeah that's just a little insider of one of my goals I always wanted before all this joy George Floyd and Brianna Taylor stuff spiked it out. It's been one of my goals. And it's yeah. hard to keep true that. I always want to, always will and always have wanted to make a very good positive change in my community, in my city. And I found out before, I was like, okay, you know, what, what are one of the ways I can help with that? And I always looked at being a police officer would be one, but until they can fix their system and until the, some things can change, I can probably I have to step away from that. Yeah. And I have to stand with my sisters and my brothers. <laughs> Cause yeah. I have been, I have been put a uh, target and attacked by the police several times, several times, several. Uh, shit, three times this year, you know, I've been pulled over, you know, took into jail just for traffic violations. But, you know, just something little. It's just like, come on, I'm in my neighborhood driving my car, you know? So, until I can see change into that. Mm -mm. But, um, yeah, I'm going to yeah. call Miss Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and it really is about education and having conversations does the police department you know are they willing to have those conversations and really listen and and have folks of color come in and and have trans folks que other queer folks folks living with mental health um differences like folks you know that some folks have uh, experience with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder 
mm-hmm. where sometimes they they need like a first responder intervention. Um, mm-hmm. Having those folks come in and educate because because they are the expert because they're they mm-hmm. this is their life come in and educate the departments and this is how we need to be treated and we need you to change the way that you're standing and staring at us because it freaks yeah. me out um yeah. you i call we call the police as a first responder for mental health mm. in this city there is like So when people call, they call for a mental health officer. They can ask for like EMCOT, um, which is like an emergency um, mental health uh, checkup. But Mm. usually it's the officer that comes first. And the officer is trained not as a mental health person. Mm. They're, they're trained to enforce laws. They're trained to be enforcers. Mm. So it's really hard. And yeah. so we have to have these communications. Um, and also they have their bias. We all have biases towards other people based on our experiences, yeah. based on our educations from, you know, our families and mm. our societies. And so education. <laughs> education is key. Mm-hmm. Education is most definitely key. You know, it's been the situations I have had with the police officers. Um, I got jumped on downtown and I asked the cops for help. And, you know, with me just being a black trans woman, he just said, oh, you're down here prostituting all of them. All, every night. And I'm like, I've never been a streetwalker. You know, I'm an online girl, but you know, I've never been a streetwalker. They're like, whatever. I said, excuse you, officer, what's your bad number? He's like, whatever, I'm taking you to jail for PI. I'm like, PI, I'm not drunk, I'm asking for help. He was like, taking to jail for PI, prostitute intoxication. I'm like, are you fucking like, serious? I'm like, They're like, yes. I was just like, are you serious? Or is this just really happening to me? And like, I, I can't believe he was speaking to me like that. Also, like, and, sex, sex, yeah. is, sex work is, you know, it can be a survival way. Um, and some people find empowerment from it. But ultimately, it's survival, empowerment, There's nothing wrong with it Mm. when it is consensual. And like in that consent is also, you know, the age, age requirements of consent. Like, um, but unfortunately is, is it is a fact that, uh, you know, a lot of queer and trans folks have experienced survival sex work. Um, Mm. And that doesn't mean that they're doing it because they're really consenting to it. It, it, and it necessarily, especially when they're youth, they're doing it because that's the only means that they have. Because a lot of them have been kicked out of their homes um, or they've been in foster care and it wasn't a good situation or whatever you have. But there is a difference between like survival sex work and like consenting because this is what you really want to do or, you know, this is the job that you really want to have, Um, you know, um, and that, that's really, yeah, (laughs) you, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. There's a lot of differences and there's a lot of judgment around it. And what people don't realize is sex work isn't just, you know, going out. It's a job. Yeah. It's It's, a job. It's work. Yeah. Some days you don't want to go to work. Hello. Like some days I don't want to go to work. And and there are people that own their own businesses. Mm. There are people that know how to do sales and marketing. And like this work can be translated to a resume. (laughs) For real. (laughs) (laughs) Um I just wanted to 
I, I had forgotten to ask you before, like what, mm-hmm. how do people keep safe? So, um, and we, so we went over that um, and I asked you if there was any, before, if there was like your last message. Um, and so we did that, but anything else pop up with you since, since then that you would like to share? Um, <clears throat> with me, um, um, I don't know, so much, like, <laughs> um, just pray, basically just been doing my music and, you know, with Austin being the livest music capital in the world, I am the first trans rapper here, here in Austin, Texas, from Austin, Texas, so I just been doing my music, been releasing videos, I have Rolling on a Bean, What the Fuck is Going On, and I have a new video coming out on the le- um, November 1st. It's titled Breaks. So the visual to that will be out on the 1st. So it'll be available on all platforms. <laughs> um, other than that, right now, I've just been working on some things, trying to look for a location and have have my dreams come true with Austin Queer Cultural Center. I'm pretty much putting that on the front line of everything right now for my new year to come, 2021, and for the other new years to come after that. So just creating a space here and getting that space here, even if I have to pay for it out of my pocket. <laughs> I'm going to do it. So, yeah, that's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look forward to, like, working with you uh, yes. further on that and just being being allies and supporters of each other, um, collaborators. Um, you, know, you know that I think that you're wonderful. Thank and, you. Um, and I'm so honored that you would join me and, and share um, your experiences and, mm-hmm. and encourage people to, to make a difference. Um, so, yeah, just thanks. Thank you. Always. And I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time out, Wes. And um, just, to, just to get to hear me and <laughs> get to know me a little bit more. And um, yes, and let me know if anything that I can help out with, keep me listed. And I uh, greatly appreciate it. You know,